Okay, so we've discussed a brief overview of this, but now we're going to go into the, the nitty-gritty details of skeletal muscle contraction. So remember again, action potential comes down the nerve. Um, it's going to cause acetylcholine release. Acetylcholine goes to the muscle acetylcholine receptors, and that's going to cause an action potential. And that's going to go down these T tubules. And then, this is an important part, there are going to be um, receptors, voltage sensitive receptors here called dihydropyridine receptors, okay, that are going to um, lead to influx of calcium into the, into the cytoplasm of the muscle cell. Remember, this is all in the muscle cell. Um, it's an unclear picture, I'm sorry, but basically, okay. So calcium comes into the cytoplasm. And then there's another receptor here called a ryanidine receptor. This is on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember, that's the structure inside the muscle cell holding all that calcium. Okay, this receptor is mechanically coupled to that dihydro dihydropyridine receptor. So that this ryanidine receptor will also open. Again, you have another receptor here. It's going to open, and calcium is going to come out into the muscle cytoplasm. So this is very key. There's a this uh, linked dihydropyridine and ryanidine receptor that will allow calcium to go into the muscle cytoplasm. Next, we're going to go uh, look into this in depth. So calcium is now in the cytoplasm, and we're going to look at a couple of structures here. We have a thin filament. Uh, first, muscle is made up of two main protein filaments. One is actin. This is the thin filament, and then we have the thick filament, which is myosin. Okay, and um, you need the myosin to bind to the actin. But before you can do that, you have a couple of things. You have you have uh, this yellow, this orange band here. This is called tropomycin. Tropomycin functions as a cock blocker. Why do I say that? It blocks my myosin from binding to actin. It's, it's like holding that spot. Myosin can't bind. The other thing to no note is tropomycin, troponin C, okay? And this is what calcium is going to bind to. It's super easy to remember. They made life easy for us here. Calcium binds to troponin C. And when this binds, it's going to cause movement of tropo tropomycin. Your cock blocker get, finally gets out of the way. And um, myosin finally gets some. He gets to attach to actin. It's going to form a cross bridge, okay? Now, myosin is very happy. And note that, actually, note that uh, myosin has ADP and, and phosphate. And that's important to know. And... Um, it's going to re it's bind to the actin and it's going to release that phosphate. It's going to kick it off. And when it kicks it off that way, then it's going to do a power stroke. So that's how it's going to shorten the muscle. And when it power strokes, at the end of the power stroke, it's going to release ADP. Okay. At the very end of this power stroke, it's finished the stroke, but it's still stuck to the actin. Um, that is important. And then um, it's going to finally release the actin when a new ATP binds. And then the ATP is going to be hydrolyzed to ADP and phosphate, so it's going to release a lot of energy. So your myosin is going to be um, go to a high energy cock state. It's cocked. It's ready to go. It's ready to bind to actin again, and it can as long as tropomycin is still not blocking the way. Now I just want to go back here um, to this section and remember how I said even after ADP is released, after it's finished the stroke, it's still bound to actin. So that's what happens when you have someone that died and their muscles are contracted, which is what we call rigor mortis. And why is, is it, it was like always hard to understand why how could their muscles can be tracked if they're dead. But what happens is they're dead, so they're not making ATP. So they have no more energy producing. So um, there's no ATP, so ATP can't bind and release the myosin. So myosin's stuck on the actin, so you get like that um, constant contraction of the muscle. So that is it for our overview of um, skeletal muscle contraction. Uh, now we're going to shift over to smooth muscle contraction, which has a different mechanism of action. Um, so I'm going to go into smooth muscle contraction now. Remember there's skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. So um, let's, let me change my pen color again. So smooth muscle, we're talking about contraction and relaxation. But what's going to happen is you're going to get mem uh, action potential here. So you're going to get... Um, membrane depolarization, and now you have um, voltage-sensitive calcium channels. So calcium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus. Let me finish our drawing here a little bit, I'm sorry. We have myosin plus actin, same as before. Um, okay. So again, our action potential comes down. These get activated, the, the channels. Calcium is going to come in. 
The difference here is that this is our sarcoplasmic reticulum with its calcium. Instead of, remember how the skeletal muscle worked? How the calcium was released? Remember it was that dihydropyridine ryanine receptor coupling? Here it's different. Calcium is going to come in and calcium is going to induce calcium release, okay? So this is a calcium-induced calcium release. That's an important term. Calcium-induced calcium release of um, and smooth muscle. And this calcium is going to bind to something called calmodulin. Okay? And it's going to make a calcium calmodulin complex. And what this is going to do, it's going to activate something called myosin light chain kinase. So what does that mean? The name tells you everything. Remember, kinase is something that phosphorylates, and it's going to phosphorylate my myosin light chain light chains. So you're going to do that, and so you're going to get phosphorylation of myosin. So you get myosin plus phosph phosphate plus actin. That's activation of the myosin. So now your myosin is ready to go. It has, it has phosphorylation, so it's energy. Now you can get power strokes just like we talked about before, and you get muscle contraction and shortening and tension. Now, if we want to relax our muscle and let it all go, we need to go back. We need to get rid of this phosphate. So we're going to talk about that, how that's going to happen. Um, and what, what we need is you need nitric oxide, which is made by endothelial cells. So nitric oxide is outside of the cell, and it's just going to diffuse into our membrane. So now we have nitric oxide, and nitric oxide is going to do something. It's going to act, cause uh, GTP to get converted into cyclic GMP. Okay, and cyclic GMP is going to activate something called myosin light chain phosphatase. And it's super easy. They made life easy for us here again too. So phosphatase is to remove phosphates. So that's what the myosin light chain phosphatase, phosphatase is going to do. It's going to cause it's going to remove that phosphate. It's going to, um, you know, it's going to get actin and my, um, myosin again, and then you get muscle relaxation. So I'm going to finish our drawing here, and that's it. That's how you get smooth muscle contraction and relaxation. Now I want to talk about uh, overview. I want to compare and contrast because I think it's, it's going to help us understand and remember each of these muscle um, functions better. So first, notice that I didn't talk about cardiac muscle. And that's for a specific reason. It's because, for exam purposes, it's exactly the same as skeletal muscle, the way that it um, contracts. Other than there's one difference. The, the one difference is that there are no dihydropyridine receptors in cardiac muscle. It is a calcium-induced calcium release. Okay, so other than that, though, it's completely the same as skeletal muscle contraction. Now I want to talk about skeletal versus smooth muscle contraction, which we have covered both mechanisms, but I want to highlight the differences for easier to remember. One, the big difference is that, again, it's a calcium-induced calcium release for smooth muscle compared to the, what was the cardiac skeletal muscle? Remember, it's that uh, dihydropyridine and ryanidine receptor coupling. Secondly, in smooth muscle, you don't have that troponin binding to the calcium. Instead, remember, you have the calcium binding to calmodulin, um, and it makes that calcium homogeneal complex. That's going to activate myosin light chain kinase, okay? And that's going to phosphorylate your myosin and allow it to bind to the actin and, and cause it and do that power stroke and get muscle contraction. All right, so that's it for our overview of skeletal smooth and muscle cardiac muscle contraction.